We have this one photo, no metadata and no information about it. But in this session, we're going to answer four simple questions using open source investigative techniques. Where was it taken? When was it taken? What is happening here? And who are these people? Let's do it. Hi everyone, and welcome back to this series on how to do open source investigations from home. I'm Ben, and this is part 24, so let's get started. First off, that crucial question, where did this happen? When we're thinking about the location, it's always useful to think of starting big and working your way down. So let's think to ourselves, what objects do we see in this photo that might stand out? For example, one of the biggest ones we see here is in the middle of this photo, where we see something like a temple or a shrine. It looks like a Buddhist shrine. We see palm trees. This might be in a tropical area. We see what looks like a very colonial-esque building on the right. So we've got a number of things to start off with. What's confusing is that we also see all of these letters written in English saying police. So you would almost assume that they speak English in this country just by seeing the words police written out. But perhaps that's not right. So this could be somewhere in Southeast Asia that's tropical, given the palm trees. We have this kind of traditional uh, Buddhist style temple or pagoda that we see in the background. We can also do an image reverse search, which is a really good step to start with to identify a few more details about this photo. We're going to do that now. I've ran this image into Google image reverse search, specifically Google Lens. And already we can see a number of similar photos that indicates that this might be Myanmar. This might be taken during protests. And that pagoda sticks out fairly well. Even here, we see a reference to a name, which is this pagoda. And it seems to be in Yangon. We see another one here in Yangon and others. So I'm already going to look at Yangon as I think my photo might have been taken there, just given some of those references. So let's go to Yangon, and that would be in Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. Yangon is a very large city, but I'm going to zoom into one of the more central areas, just given the fact that this looks like maybe a quite a built up area. The road is quite large. We see we've got four four lanes, quite a quite a sizable area here. And just given that that seems to be a massive pagoda and a roundabout, and we have some other large buildings, I'm thinking that this might be a central area. So I'm going to scout around in some of these areas. And I might even start in downtown Yangon, which is this area in here. It's starting with quite a zoomed out view already, I can see quite a large pagoda in the middle of the screen, which is located here. This actually already makes sense for me, this location, because we've got quite a large road and we have that colonial building. What we can also see is this radio tower right here. And this building that we see at the back here with this little one in front of it, we also see a little chock, a little kind of square coming up in, in, in the middle of it. I can see that coming up there and a little building right there. So I feel like almost the view that I am looking at is something that looks like this. Now we see uh, the sidewalk here, it bends around and then we have a kind of zebra crossing with yellow in amongst the white middle lane markers. I can see a yellow zebra crossing quite clear there and I can see that red and white. We also see those trees along there and then that building uh, a little bit closer. And so now I'm able to line up my map to match that quite well. So we've identified the first question, where was this filmed? Now that we've identified the location, we're going to move on to the second question, which is when was this taken? My first look is going to be going back to some of the alternative images that were taken at the same time. I think there's quite a few photos uh, that appear to narrow down a window of time for us. Apparently this photo of uh, a different police officer, but what appears to be the same location, 
was taken on the 16th of February 2021. There appears to be another website which also has a photo, maybe taken at a different time of the day, on 8th of February. So it seems around February that many of these photos were taken. These are all in 2021, so what I'm going to do is take my Google Earth back to 2021 and see if perhaps we can see a recreation of the same image we were looking at just before. I'm now in March 2021. I'm going to click on my little plus symbol to get my dates, but I'll take my dates from down the bottom here in the status bar, which says I'm on the 16th of March 2021. On February 13, 2021, there's a congregation of vehicles in the middle here and on the side there. There's a lot of people over here, what appears to be a protest perhaps. And there's also people over here. And then there's some objects actually located right here. Going back to my image, I'm going to zoom in a bit. What I can see in the background of the image is lots of people behind these vehicles. There seems to be some sort of a stand or barricade and a collection of colors in the backgrounds there and what on this side I think are probably people. And then we have these police vehicles. Note also with the makeup of the police vehicles we have three with the kind of funny tops, two on this side and then one big one and a kind of whitish one here. We also have vehicles behind them as well. Perhaps we can see that on satellite imagery. So if we look, we have the three, the one big, the one white, two. Three, one big, one white, two. We also have vehicles behind them. I can make out clearly at least this large police white, white police vehicle. We seem to have that there just parked on an angle as well so that we can see the back of it. And then we have those people over there. So I can see these figures here too, which is quite interesting because that seems to be representative of what I'm seeing in the image here as well. Now this doesn't indicate that the this photo was taken on February 13, but at least we can get very down into the detail of a window of time as to when this was taken. I can also go back to my Google Lens and there's an option here to click Find Image Source and perhaps I can even look at where this image source might be. I might go to the Human Rights Watch article. We can see Getty Images with a photographer name there. And I can also run a Google search with the text as well. I can maybe select a specific date now that I've identified that, around, that date around February 2021. Seems like quite a few photos here. So we have 161 images and we have the original image here. It's on February 13, same date as our image here. We might also have some metadata here, February 13. Now that's really helpful that we have the date because now we can even do something more specific that we have the location and the date. I'm going to be exact with my location and say that this was here. And I'm going to go over to an application called suncalc.org. Suncalc.org allows me to basically recreate the same shadow. I'm going to look at the same location. So we're going to go to Yangon in Myanmar. I'll zoom in so that we can identify the exact same spot that we're looking at. So over here, and we're looking for placing this on just next to that white bar. And we're going back to our image of February 13, 2021. I'm going to make my object uh, a little bit higher, but just so that you can see it clearly. Now, the shadow that we have here appears to be pointing across to the in section that we have here. So it appears to be pointing over to almost these yellow lines that we have here. If we were to recreate this same image, it appears to be pointing over to that second line after the yellow line, this line over here. So we might be able to recreate the same thing that we're looking at by pointing the shadow to that second line right there. It indicates to me, and I've dragged this timer, this slider that you can see along the top here, over to show the shadow as pointing in the same direction as the one that we see over here, just by the shapes and the direction that it might be traveling, that we might be looking at a time 
and we can see the closer time over here of about 10.30 a.m. By using this, we've cross-verified by using both satellite imagery to show the same circumstance of what we see at that time of that satellite image. We've looked at the verification of the actual original image source to see the date that it was taken and we've also confirmed that with the shadows here. I think we've sufficiently answered the question of when that happened. Now we can source a lot of our information together and look at what was happening. Now of course we can't replace being on the ground but we can use some of the digital information we've collected so far to identify what was happening. For example, now that we have a satellite image from that day, we're able to look around the area. And so we can see traffic was stopped over here and we can see groups of people over here, lining up around the pagoda over here, this central kind of roundabout here. The traffic seems to be stored. We can see lots of people all the way along here at what appears to be quite a large protest. We can see more groups over here now we go back to our location, we can also see people along here. If we have a look inside the tree area and in here, we can actually see a little bit more detail than what the photo gives us. For example, we were able to see the vehicles here, but we can actually count significantly how many vehicles were here from that view above in comparison to what we see on the ground. This is why satellite imagery helps because it gives us a situational awareness and overview. So we can actually count how many vehicles are there Behind the trees, we actually couldn't see those before, even if we zoom in, but now we can see them quite clearly, just how many vehicles are there. So by fusing what we see on the ground with the satellite imagery, we're able to tell so much more about what's happening rather than just relying on a single image. But also remember what we did before, we did an image reverse search by using Google Lens. We're able to see so many more images on the ground. For example, that previous image that we saw, we also have that alternative angle of imagery here where we could actually go in and inspect this a little bit further as an alternative angle uh, to see the photo that that photographer took. So it's a fair indication that we've identified using some of the available photos, the satellite imagery as well, and that situational awareness and overview as to what was going on. Now obviously that doesn't replace being on the ground but at least it gives a very helpful indication as to other things happening in the area. So I think it's fair to say we've identified remotely at least what was happening in this image. We're now going to move on to the next one which is who are these people or where are they from? I'm not going to identify their individual names but what we can do at least is identify some of the unique markers that they have. So it's fairly clear that they are part of the police, as it's written almost everywhere in this image. We have a number of patches here that we could maybe dig into, as well as some things around the uniform, such as the red scarf, the helmet, and the riot shield might indicate that these are riot police. We could start with the patch, for example. And you would have noticed that when I did my image reverse search previously, a number of other photos were popping up. What we can actually do is narrow down our image reverse search to one of these individuals, and that might just show us more of these uh, individuals with closer uh, images of the patches as well, right? We can see the symbol quite clear there, and there seem to be a number of articles at least referencing them as, as uh, police or even going down uh, more specific into riot police. We've got another article here that gives us a bit more detail on the patch. So where we could only see before uh, a kind of darker side view, we have a more clear one with the writing as well. Um, so we could download this image, open it up and just zoom in on that a little bit more to clearly indicate that these are Myanmar police. And what we could do is even just do a, a simple Google search for Myanmar riot police. See the kind of images that pop up 
uh, whether the red scarf is indeed an indication of that. If we type in the red scarf just to go a little bit more distinct into what we're actually searching for, these red scarves are, are quite interesting. Uh, they seem to indicate a, an affiliation with riot police, which we can see in some of these reports from Myanmar witness here. Red scarf states the battalion number and tied around their necks. It appears to be Lontain personnel. So that allows us to sufficiently, in, in some level of detail, identify who this group might be that this individual is affiliated with, as well as what these people are doing here, at what time, at what location, all through the power of publicly available information. I hope you find this session useful as a all-encompassing session to answer those four important questions when looking at an image that doesn't have any other available data sent with it, that doesn't have metadata, really starting from scratch with analysing what is in a photo. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next session.